Hello, I am Maureen Madden and welcome to Nano Nano News. I am joined by Fiona White and we are here today to discuss nanowires in batteries. Nanowires are thinner than a human hair, with the order of 10 to the minus 9 metres. Recently, a lot of research has gone into nanowires with regard to batteries. Today, we have Lisa and Shannon from the University of Limerick in studio to talk about the past, present and futures of nanowires with regards to batteries. Thank you, Fiona and Marie, for having us in the studio today. Today we're going to talk about the uses of batteries and how they have developed in the past and what will happen to them in the future. Scientists in many places such as Stanford and Berkeley University are working hard to research and develop longer lasting batteries. So, we all know what batteries are and why we need them. But do we really know why certain batteries are used instead of others? Take for example a regular Duracell battery, using things like remote controls, fairy lights and alarm clocks. Yes, these batteries are fine for those products, but why don't we use them in products such as phones and laptops? In the past, alkaline batteries were the most common batteries, but with improvements in science, lithium-ion batteries have passed alkaline ones out. Lithium-ion batteries are available in various forms. Low-power ones are available for products such as phones, and high-power batteries are available for high-power tools. There are many reasons lithium-ion batteries are more beneficial than alkaline, some being size, safety and energy density rate. But are they at the highest standard they can possibly be at? This is where we begin to discuss nanowires for batteries. Nanowires for batteries have some advantages and some disadvantages. As Fiona mentioned, nanowires are extremely small. This leads to an increased surface area and subsequent increased conductivity rate. The materials used can store up to 10 times more lithium, leading to a larger energy density. These batteries are longer lasting, which are easier to manage and lead to reduced levels of pollution. These nanowire batteries are smaller and lighter, and importantly, they are safer than regular lithium ion batteries, as they can withstand expansion and contraction, therefore reducing risk of explosions and overheating. These advantages can save money and lead to improvements in many industries over time. Unfortunately, there are also some disadvantages one being that these batteries can be expensive to synthesise. This leads me on to discuss the synthesis of nanowires. Synthesis can be carried out in bottom-up, which is essentially the growth from a liquid, or top-down, which is etching of bulk substrates. This video is showing the bottom-up method of synthesis, where small particles combine together to form the nanowire. With this mechanism, a high degree of control can be achieved over the dimensions of the nanowire. Materials commonly used for nanowires are silicon and germanium. An up-and-coming material that is being widely researched today is gold. Researchers in California may have created a solution to the batteries not being able to hold the charge. According to the researchers, nanowires which increase the surface area of the battery's electrodes are very fragile and start cracking and degrading after a period of use. By coating the gold nanowires in a shell of manganese dioxide and a plexiglass-like electrolyte gel, the electrode was able to cycle over 200,000 times without detecting any loss of capacity or power. Gold is expensive, yes. However, it is hoped in the future gold will be replaced with a cheaper material such as nickel. Another question is, are there any other competition for nanowire batteries? The answer to this question is yes. However, many of these batteries are still only in the concept stage of research. For example, graphene anode lithium ion batteries, lithium air batteries, sodium ion batteries, aluminium air batteries. All of these batteries sound very promising for the future. However, most of them are still in the concept stage, whereas nanowire batteries have a lot more research gone into them. Nanowires and batteries have now become a part of our everyday lives. Some examples are smartphones and smart cars. As I think everyone can agree, the biggest problem with the iPhone is the battery life. With increased charging cycles, the charging capacity decreases. With nanowires in batteries, the charging capacity decreases at a much slower rate than the lithium ion batteries. Also, by using nanowire batteries are smaller, which allows it to keep up with new size and technologies. Nanowires for batteries are also being introduced to the biomedical industry, for example pacemakers. While implanted nanogenerators have been successfully tested in lab rats, human trials have not yet been conducted. The power source is derived from kinetic energy produced by the body. 
There are many benefits of using nanowires in batteries and pacemakers over traditional batteries, such as the traditional batteries use chemicals that would be toxic in the body. However, zinc oxide nanowires are biocompatible in the body. Also, the battery does not have to be changed, decreasing the amount of surgery needed. Thank you, Shannon and Lisa, for that report. And thank you for watching Nano Nano News.